Has Kirk Jung given the herd super swing a fair shake? Let's um, examine that question. But let's first take a look at the herd super swing in action. All right, now we're going to learn about the Hurd Super Swing and ask ourselves, did Kirk Jung employ the Hurd Super Swing in his evaluation of it? First, we see that Kirk's grip is weaker than the Hurd Super Swing grip. And we're going to let Nick Messinas go into detail on that. In rhythm. But what we found in the Hurd Super Swing is that if we take this right hand and make a slight adjustment by placing it a little deeper in the right hand, now we'll take it back and you'll notice that the arms are not rolling. Club is going to stay squared to the path, take it to the top of the backswing, bring it back down. Now because I'm holding it a little deeper in my right hand, if I straighten out the club face or the, the club, you can see how the club face just squares right up. It imp All right. So now let's move on to the next thing. You can see toe uh, up position here by Kirk Jung on the left. And uh, if we watch the video, we'll see him roll his wrist through impact. And, um, but we're gonna look at the Hurd super swing and we're gonna see that that's just not how the club is taken back in the Hurd super swing. Take it away, Paul Dolman. The third thing, and this is really critical, is the face angle. The face of our golf club in the herd super swing always points in the direction the club is moving. There is no need to roll the hands or move the forearms or manipulate the club in order to square it for impact. And here's how we do this. Where the traditional golf swing is here at about halfway up the, up the back swing, in the herd super swing, we change the grip so that the wrists are hinging, the hands are moving on plane in this fashion here, not here. In the herd super swing, when we cock the wrists, the face of the club is still square to the path the club is moving on. Next, uh, we notice that Kirk Jung claims that the herd super swing leads to people struggling with hooks. Well, let's listen to Paul Dolman once again to see why that's probably not the case. We're going to move the club head so that it is always in line with the direction the club is moving. And what that means to you as a player is that your shots are going to be a lot straighter, a lot straighter, hooking and slicing is virtually eliminated in this swing because you do not have to manage the opening and closing of the club face during the swing. Wow. I'm starting to really doubt Kirk Yoon's assertions about the uh, Hurd Super Swing. But uh, now, let's go on. Let's say that, you know, well, there are these problems with the Hurd Super Swing. He says that his swing is more evolved than the Hurd Super Swing. Well, gosh, the Hurd Super Swing addresses three problems in the traditional golf swing, whereas the Kirk Hughes only addresses one. I, I don't get it. I don't see how that's the case. Let's take a quick look at the Hurd Super Swing and see the three aspects of the traditional golf swing that it addresses. The three things I want to talk about are, are problem areas that we found in the traditional golf swing. The first problem area that we see is the management of the weight transfer in the traditional golf swing. Traditional golf swing requires you to move to, into your right side and then transfer your weight to the left side during the swing. That's difficult for a lot of people to do well and to time well. Second area is the traditional golf swing setup has the player with his arms in a natural hanging position here nearly vertical and the shaft of the club at an angle. Now this angle between the arms 
and the shaft of the club presents a problem. It's a timing problem. It's a mechanical problem during the golf swing. And we've eliminated that in the herd super swing. The third area, and this is really critical, is the way the face points during the traditional golf swing. In the traditional swing, we start in this position, and about halfway into the back swing, we find that the toe is leading the club, meaning this is pointing in the direction the club is going. In the downswing, the heel is leading the path of the club. Now what that means to you is that at some point prior to impact, the club face has to be rolled so that the face of the club is leading or pointing in the direction of the path. In the herd super swing, we've solved that problem too. Here's what we do. First of all, we set up with our weight already on the back side. Our head is pretty much over our right knee. So there's no weight shift into the right side. You're already there. The second thing is we set up at a dress with our hands in a higher position. This is the impact position. We also make it the address position. The third thing, and this is really critical, is the face angle. The face of our golf club in the herd super swing always points in the direction the club is moving. There is no need to roll the hands or move the forearms or manipulate the club in order to Okay, so there you have it. So, is Kurt Jung qualified to critique the herd super swing? Well, not if critiquing it involves doing it because he has not done it and we've articulated why. Now, has Kirk Jung evolved the herd super swing? Well, if one thing addresses three problems of the golf swing and one only addresses one, well, I wouldn't call that evolution. So no, I cannot say that Kirk Jung has evolved the herd super swing. I think he's simply making a statement without providing any evidence. He certainly didn't in his video.